Well, hello everyone. It's J Jonathan. My call is uh, K3CY and it's April. It's time to start thinking about field day. I just like to, uh, to uh, celebrate these new rules that ARRL is, uh, has installed, allowing clubs to do more things outside of a thousand foot radius and collaborate scores. So a couple of our fellows uh, decided they'd like to have uh, one alpha battery uh, station just down the road on the mountain ridge that we're on uh, to operate as a separate entity. And K4NN will continue to be a 100 watt station uh, at the cabin where we were before. So uh, that got me to thinking that we need a third spider beam. I just love these spider beams. They're so simple to put together and uh, and they give you um, a nice amount of gain at the same time uh, very uh, broadbanded quiet receiving and uh, very lightweight now the first one that i made was out of normal fiberglass uh, uh, material elements that from like a stepper uh, antenna and so forth but it still weighed about 26 pounds so i thought Maybe I could make another spider beam out of the uh, material that I have from, uh, from other projects. Uh, this is the mass that uh, spider beam, Viverplex in the United States, uh, sells for uh, like uh, portable operations. It's at 12 meters or 40 feet tall, and it's strong enough to support a center fed dipole, if it's not too heavy, at the apex of that uh, antenna. Um, and um, and you just pull them out. Now I like to tape the ends, but um, the the cool thing about this this um, mast is that you can separate the sections and do other things. Now one of the things that I have done uh, in previous field days is making a loop. I had three of them that were 12 foot long to make uh, a single element loop and vertical loop antenna. It worked pretty good. I just thought, I wonder if I could use this same mast to make a spider beam. When I talked to the Viberplex people, they thought that it was far too light and it wouldn't work. Uh, but it's what I had, so I thought I should try it. So this video is gonna be a little bit backwards. I start with raising it up in the air and then I disassemble it and pack it away. So you'll just have to think backwards for the way you create it. But uh, it, uh, it just uh, turned out very well. And I'm, I'm uh, quite tickled with how light you can make a spider beam and still make it work. Because spider beams are large, uh, they are really aw awkward to handle. So I thought I might be able to put this lightweight frame on a stick to raise my height that I can reach and go up and over the mast. Obviously, I increased the speed on some of these sections. I really don't walk that fast, but it gives you an idea how I can mount these antennas uh, using a mast such as this one and not some kind of push-up mast that is normally used. Just need a 12-foot step ladder and this walk-up plank I was able to get the antenna up and over without getting all the wires entangled along the way. And I could reach that small dowel and slip it on top. Once the antenna is in place, we can connect the coax to the ballum. I'm using a Ballum Designs 1110 choke ballum here. It's just a lightweight 300 watt ballum, uh, one to one ballum, ballum. Uh, but I suspect any ballum would do. 
So now it's time to push up the mast. I'm really not sure how heavy this is that I'm lifting, but it, it's really not that heavy. The, this telescoping mast weighs just over 50 pounds, and I would guess the antenna might weigh around 10 pounds. I just needed my friend to help hold the base down as I push it up. I had tied off the first two guy rope, right, ropes for the lower section before I pushed it up. And so now that it's up, I can tie the others down before we crank it up further. At this point, just the lower section is guide. The outside mast is two inch, uh, two inch mast. The inside mast is one and a half inches and both are 24 foot long. So on field day, when we want to operate, we can take it up to about 15 feet higher, I think, to about 40 feet. And that should be good. So everything is in place now, and we can test this antenna for SWR. Uh, because these antennas are full-size antennas, they are really broadbanded, as you can imagine. Uh, 20 is perfect all the way across the band. Fifteen here is a bit long, and so I think I can trim an inch and a half off the 15 meter driven element and it'll be fine. And of course, uh, 10 is perfect also, as you can see. Because uh, of uh, this development that's happening behind my property here, it's really tough to listen to the radio with all of this earth moving equipment. But uh, maybe you can hear that uh, the signals are really uh, nice and quiet, such as you have with horizontal polarization. So now it's time to take the antenna down and Again, we can lower it onto the stepladder just like we put it up. As we take it down, there is a tendency for fiberglass tips to bend if they hit the ground first. But it's just amazing how forgiving these fiberglass elements are. Taking it off the mast is almost more tedious than putting it on. On field day, we will have more people and I'll be able to have a person take off the antenna and put it on the stick and just hand the stick down to the person below. And then that person who took it off the mast can stay at the top of the ladder to guide the wires over the mast. That would be much better than trying to walk up and down the ladder holding the antenna with one arm and uh, the other arm holding onto the ladder. Now that it's down, we can see how this antenna goes together. First of all, we just untie the wires. I have to put in a plug for Atwood rope. I, the first time I made a spider beam, I used Mason's line and it was so stretchy it was almost unusable. But I found this Atwood rope at a hardware store and I can't sing the praises of this rope higher. It is so strong, so light, ties really easily, and it doesn't stretch. It's just perfect for this application. I just use a little slip knot to tie off the wires, 
and that it's so easy to untie. Now we can disconnect the driven elements from the ballum. It's really nice that the 15 meter element is right on the cross beam. Uh, 20 is on the reflector side and then 10 is on the, direct, the director side. Now we can just pull the cross beams off the dowel rods that hold them in place. The, uh, they aren't even attached strongly. The only thing that holds the elements, uh, the cross beams onto the dowels, is the tension from the supporting strings from that are tied off to the up to the mast. The only downside of these wooden dowels is if they get wet, they tend to swell and makes it hard to loosen up. But uh, other than that, they are just perfect for field day use. So it's now time to wind up all the ropes and wires. First of all, I wind up the strings that support the cross beams and I tape those strings onto the PVC mast. Then I pull each wire element to the side of the cross beam uh, to wind them up together. I like to wind up the wires and strings from the outside in toward the cross beam because it's so much easier to unwind that way. And then we can tape the wire wind up boards to the cross beam for storage. I have to say that the, the Viberplex folks were right when they said that these masts were far too light to support a spider beam. When I first put it together, the ends drooped down so far uh, on the cross beams where the wire elements were tied off. and. Uh, and they didn't, didn't support the wires at all. But fortunately, I had some, had six fiberglass poles that we used to mark off parking lots for snow removal. And I used two of them on the cross beams where the wires are tied off, and one on each, and one each on the other ends. And that little extra bit of support made these lightweight beams perfectly usable. Once all the wires are wound up, we can pack them away and we can use this old painter's cloth to hold them in place. I like cloth because it keeps all the wires in place for storage and transport to our field day location. I just use a little tape and bungee cords to hold it all together. I should say something about the mass that supports this antenna. It is just like the earlier ones that I made here on YouTube a couple years ago, but this one is just smaller and a whole lot lighter. Uh, this outside uh, mast is two inch square with eighth inch wall, and the inch and the, the mast inside is one and a half inch square with three sixteenth inch wall. As you can see, I have eye bolts here on the top and bottom section top of the both mass to tie off guy ropes. Here you can see the little pulley installed to crank up the inside mass. I cut a slot in the side of that inside mass uh, and attach the cable to the bottom of it and, and then that cable comes through that slot and then through a small hole to the pulley on the outside mass and then down to the winch. The winch is just a simple hand winch that you could use to pull a boat onto a trailer. It's really important to drill a hole through the mast for a bolt to lock the inner mast in place, especially for transportation. If you tie this thing on top of your car and you brake really hard, uh, that inside mast could just become a projectile. So. Thanks for watching. Hope to hear you all on field day. This is K3CY saying 73s or best regards to all of you.